Good afternoon, folks. It's 12:10 uh, p.m., July 19th, 2018. I apologize. I have a little bit of a cold today, so it's going to be a lot of coughing and stuff. Anyway, if there's any problem with my mic, if you could let me know, that would be great. We're having uh, some serious um, weather-related wind issues here too today. So, anyway, let me know. And if not, great. We'll be done here in about 20 minutes. I'm going to take a look at um, some charting uh, for Royal Caribbean, Disney, uh, volatility, the dollar, S&P, X, uh, RKDA, SQ, and maybe some Momos if we have enough time. But that's a fair load for today. And we're going to be ramping up the days uh, over the earnings season here. That's when we do most of our swing trading. Um, so you'll see, uh, especially by next week, by Monday, heavy duty. Uh, today, uh, it'll be around 20 minutes. Tomorrow, probably around the same. And then Monday, we're going to ramp right up. And a lot of the reports are going to start coming out. And there will be special reports for our members specific to these middays. So anyway, you'll get a feel if you're not uh, normally or haven't been with us for long. But that's when we ramp up. Okay, so the volatility index, uh, there's a time cycle coming next week. Uh, it's rating around, completes rating around the 23rd. Because it's such a huge time cycle, it's a weekly chart. I can't give you an exact date. So between here and the end of the month, there's a completion of the time cycle. Now, what does that normally mean? Normally, um, that means a change in uh, trajectory. And right now, the trajectory going into the time cycle completion is down. So you can expect some action here up. The only thing is, is that uh, if you notice um, this last time cycle here, where it completed, it got pinched. This isn't a pinch. This is this is allowing for a lot of room. But um, either way, uh, that's really uh, neither here nor there. Either way, you should see um, some action on the other side of that time cycle or going into the time cycle. In other words, there should be a reversal. Where the big one is, is uh, the biggest one in the next year is December 24th. It completes. It'll be pinched in there. So who knows? I mean, it could um, it could stay pretty calm until December 24th. Or on the other side of this, uh, you'll see a big change. We'll see. That's what I'm watching for on volatility. And um, if it starts to move, then uh, I'm going to move with it. That'll be a big trade for me. So that's uh, volatility. The dollar. Um, so, long story short, when it was way down in its um, uh, dump earlier this year, I was screaming from the rooftop saying that it was divergent, so down in here. And you'd have to go back into our files to see. But anyway, this is February, and I was saying uh, don't, don't, don't get too excited yet. Anyway. It did get it back up into its structure here, and uh, since then it's been uh, hitting targets. Now you'd have to go, you'd have to go into our reports to completely understand what's happened since. But the algorithm model on it is a series of um, triangles, and so it got into the first, hit the target, up into the next triangle, so it concluded here. This red. You have to go into the reports, but if you can visualize the triangle. Anyway, what it did was it hit the target here. It came back. It retraced to the 50%. You can see that there. Actually touched down, which is typical, one fib under, and took off. And so more, most recently, it's been trading inside of the next triangle, the baby blue. And over where it is now, if it holds... Um, your next target is way up here at 97.30 ish. Now, it would actually, this is kind of deceiving, it would actually more like, sorry, I gave you the wrong number there, it more like do that to the trajectory 96.85, but still, you may as well call it 96.50 to 97.50. Um, if it holds up and over this diagonal baby blue trend line. Um, what you can do is, um, I think what I'll do is I'll put together a post for our members on the dollar. 
I mean, we have a, a dollar service, right? Uh, but um, I think if I get time, I'm going to do that for you. But that's what you want to watch. You basically want to watch this diagonal trend line. It goes from you know up in here at 97.70, and it slowly sh shifts down to 96.38. So that's your range, 96.50 to 97.50. If it holds above this blue, baby blue, I mean, it might pop up and just come back down, but um, it's bullish. So we've been screaming about it. Um, I wouldn't doubt that's going to happen. This is the upper trend line, this white dotted line here. It's following this. We've had this charting put together for the last 18 months, so this isn't something new for us. So all of this was charted in advance of the move. That's the point. The lower trend line is here. So you can always take a snapshot of that while it's on the screen, but I've um, I've published it before. Um, if it stays up and over this uh, baby blue trend line, resistance line, and it gets up over 95.61, that's my trigger for the long, and I'll scale in uh, until I see those mid-96s, and then I'll start to trim out. Anytime it gets near this diagonal, you've got to trim out. So you got to you got to get the pullbacks, right? So every time it gets that trend line where these white arrows are, it pulls back and then it goes. So timing is important, but long story short, you're you're bullish if it's above that baby blue. Okay, the S and P. <coughs> Sorry, um, I've got a trigger for a long side trade over 281.04. The way the S and P model works is. Um, uh, your support and resistance, lower, lower support is 278.66. It's always one fib up and one fib down as the test area. So up above that, for me, is a long to uh, 283.89. So I'm waiting for uh, about 281, call it, um, for a target of 283. And then once it's up here, it goes in between the two, right, the one up and the one down, and same thing. And it's a very consistent trade, and we've done really well with it. Now, you know, there's some areas that are not as pretty, like down in here, but anyway, that's what you're looking for. Your main support area is 27854, your main resistance area is 28385. Under 2786054 in that area, uh, your next support is down here, 27343. So that's the S&P. That's what we're watching for. I'm pretty convinced we're going to see volatility into next week. But Disney, so it uh, triggered again at this resistance. So this was a play. We've been in and out of this all the way through. It's been a great trade. It's been really structurally sound. Uh, once it got up over its main trigger, so wherever you see these arrows like this, that's a main trigger. Or you can call it mid-quad, and you know... It's mid-quad because of the targets. But anyway, once it got up over mid-quad here, shot up, almost right to resistance, I had put out an alert saying, chances are it's going to turn down. It turned down, shot up, and uh, here, it's you know it didn't turn back down. It just went. But it's at a, right here, that diagonal blue line, that that's a trend line. That's a quad wall. So it's hit resistance there, and that's typical where it hits the horizontal resistance and the and the uh, diagonal. Um, so I put out a little note on that today. So you got to be careful. It's very likely it's going to sit in this compression until it gets near its, uh, what's the date on that? So that's in September, early September. So it's bullish target early September, 117.53. Uh, if it comes off, your target is 110.60ish. And if it uh, dumps, your target is 103.68. So it's just paint by numbers, trade by numbers. Um, these arrows are the most important part. So there's one here, there's one here, there's one here. Up over the arrows is long, under the arrows is a short, to keep it really simple. Everything else is intraday kind of trading. But that's uh, Disney. So that's been fantastic. So I'm watching the test right now. If it gets up over it and it sits in here, then it's going to handle this trajectory. I mean, it, it, look for a pullback, and if it takes off again and keeps following this arrow, this trajectory, 
you can go, you know, you can go to the target. But I think you're going to see a pullback, at least half, right, into that trajectory, and then up or down. We'll see. But it's been fantastic. We've got lots of range on it, which is cool. So that's Disney. Um, a few of the other ones I was charting right before I got on here. Let's see if they've propagated. So here's RCL. Let's take a look at RCL. We've had some really good trades in RCL. I think it was late 2017. It was around election time. Going into 2018, we had a fantastic trade in there. One of my bigger ones in the last couple of years. Some of these models are tuned in really well, and this is one that um, has been really good. Okay, so if you load these charts and you see how the indicators are at the bottom and you want to get rid of them, just uh, put your cursor on the main body of the, um, of the chart and you just double click it and then it comes out. Okay, so this one I had alerted uh, that uh, the downside wasn't uh, very likely. Um, I mean, um, the um, what's the right way to put it? After it dumped, I had alerted um, that uh, the shorts should consider covering because we could see this. And sure enough, so it popped and it's right into the target area early. It got up against the diagonal quad wall there and came back off here today, but it's in the target. So the point is it's there. So your main resistance now is going to be 114.90, call it 115. It hit 113 today at the quad wall. What's even more important than that, now, that's important. <laughs> uh, your 115 resistance, very important. If it comes off 98.50-ish uh, in uh, February, you know, this is a big timeline. Um, if it's up and over, though, that 114, it's going to be trending towards 131 for early next year. And each one of these horizontal lines are your support and resistance. So right now we're trading 111.89. So your support is in that 111.09 range. Over that 111.09, um, I mean, it might, it might uh, pinch in here. It just depends on where it ends up. But the point is, is your main resistance is there at 115, call it. And your uh, not as significant support is 110.93. Now, I haven't got the... Uh, buy sell triggers marked on here, but you always know where they are because if you take the baseball diamond or the diamond itself, um, it's always the top and the bottom and the middle are buy sell triggers. And you'll find that that's where the targets are too, right? So in this case, this is your mid quad line. So when it lost it here, it was a short from 115 down to 10415. It was getting close to the next mid quad. They bought it up, it moved around, and then, anyway, there's your main uh, resistance. So I think you get the point. That's um, how our charting works. And if you ever need to learn how it, these models work, uh, you can either take some private um, trade coaching, attend the coaching event, or just go through our videos on YouTube. Okay, so that's uh, Royal Caribbean. And I think I mentioned all these middays that we're doing, we're going to be putting together reports for our swing trading members rolling through earnings here because that's our big time of the year. Um, okay, S&P I went through. I guess the other ones haven't propagated here yet. Actually, that might be it that I was working on. Okay, so I'll bring up some of the other charting here. Pardon me, sorry guys. Okay, um, we are going to go to RKDA. So these aren't models that you're going to see. This is just conventional charting, but I want to take a look at them. And the first one will take a minute, and the rest will be fast. It'll take a minute to come up here. R K D A. 
So this was the big Momo in uh, pre-market. Uh, but the chart structure I wanted to show you here. So it's up now 10% on the day it came off. I thought, thought that was a little overdone for the news, but once we get past the first chart load here, the next loads will be really quick. Okay, so this is a daily. Now this has been in a bottom, you know, call it a bottom formation if you want, for a long time. The point is, you know, when you get these kind of charts, if they get into some good news momos, uh, momentum scenarios, if they have the right promoters behind the deal, remember that's how I started in the markets, right? So I have a good idea of how this works. Something tells me that uh, the, the, there's either a new promoter, I haven't researched it yet, and I'm not uh, going to get into it in detail, but I am going to tell you that today, today's move and today's news look like a new promoter to me. And if it's the right promoters, uh, you'll want to watch this one because this chart has a ton of room. And if you look at where that 50 MA is, that purple, so the whole time it's been in this bottom formation, you know, that 50 was way up there and it's got to come back down. The point is, when that 50 gets close enough to this price, I bet you you're going to see at least a double. Um, now, that's a funky move, or, you know, technically speaking, it's not my typical structure, but I know enough about these that when that 50 gets close, you got to watch it really close. So what I do, you know, and you can always handle your trading this way too, is I put an alert on the 50 MA. RKDA crossing 50 MA. Because when that happens, it will seriously gap. And it's just because there is so much width on this structure. And that 20 MA had to come down. Now the 50 MA is coming down. And it'll very likely gap to that 100 MA. So well, I guess not, you're not going to see quite a double. But, you know, nice. You, you know, you might see eight, eight and a half bucks to 14 and a half bucks, 14 bucks ish. It'll definitely be one I'll, I'll deal with, I'll trade for sure. The 200 MA is going to be your first resistance after it gets the 50. And then uh, what should happen is the price should get through that 200 MA and the 50 should push them both through up into that 100 and that's probably where it'll back off. That's my guess. Uh, it's uh, an aggressive analysis. There's not a lot of science behind it, just experience behind that one. Uh, square. If there's any charts you want me to look at quick, go ahead and put them in. So this one concerns me. Um, I've liked it all the way along. I've liked it since it first started. Uh, on its breakouts, we charted it. We put it in uh, pre-markets um, as um, one of our favorites. It was right in here at this breakout. There, we knew this was a serious. If you go back into my posts, you'll find right here I was saying you know, this is, this is time to look serious. And so, anyway, it got a nice extension, came back, retested uh, the pivot that we had established, and then hit again, and nothing but fantastic since. Now, the problem is, I don't know if you can see it or not, but that, ex this next extension, there's nothing for it to work with. Like, there's no supports, there's no pivots, there's no, you know, I'm not going to get into the details. You could just say, okay, how far is it away from the 200 MA and price? Now, could it continue? Sure, it could continue. Did it do it here? Yeah, but look at what it did after. And that's a significant drop. That's what I'm talking about. I think you're going to see that. So, don't get too comfortable too long. Um, I'm probably going to end up in a short. Look at that. That's the weekly. I mean, just look at that 200 MA. That 200 MA right now is down at, what, 58 what is that, 56.71? And it's trading at 70, 77. Look at what it did here. 49, 46. It had to return to the 20 MA. Same, almost identical. So for me, it's a short suit. I think, I think that's a problem for longs. Okay, next. Now keep in mind, that's the first time I've ever said that about Square. It's not like I run around um, saying, uh, you know, it's overextended. One of our members asked me about H-E-A-R. Now, when this first, this is the weekly chart. When this started happening, I was all over it. 
I wanted to take it, but it was just junk. I day traded it, which by the way, our day trading will kick up uh, starting next week in through earnings season. It would be really aggressive. But anyway, my point is, right in here, it got up over the 200. I was all over it. I day traded it, and then I lost track of it, and I stayed out of it. And look at the move. Absolutely fantastic move. You see the similarity behind this chart and um, our KDA's chart, the structure? Same idea. Now, when the 50 finally got down here, you see how it popped over it and then it failed. Uh, it's a little bit different that way, but the point is, once it was in its bottom pattern long enough, the 200 MA got close, price was over the 50 MA, just caught boom. But it didn't have to deal with the uh, 100. So what am I saying? I'm saying longs should trim. I think you're going to see a pullback soon. This is a pivot right here, where exactly where it's at right now, to 30.50. So that range to get up over 30.50 is going to be tough. I think you're going to see a significant pullback, probably to that 20 MA. Am I going to short this one? No. This is too aggressive of a structure to short. It can go forever. Okay, so that's H-E-A-R. And I'm um, almost on the day. I'll just review a couple of them here quick. So SMIT. Oh, by the way, we have earnings after hours with... Um, uh, sorry, Microsoft, SWKS. else was I going to watch? Oops. Those two for sure. So I'll be reporting on those after. Yeah, I won't go through the charts right now because there's no need. Um, but definitely after uh, the earnings are released, I think I will. Okay, SMIT, I hate the chart. This is a day trader's paradise. Unless you're a professional, a uh, serious expert at day trading, you just don't want to do it. It keeps hitting the pivot. Squeezing above and then tanking, squeezing above, tanking, squeezing above, tanking, because the pivot's right here where it's at. Um, sure, if it holds up and above this pivot, call it, you know, three bucks, 310 ish, and it closes. Um, this is a weekly chart, by the way. But on any given day, if it closes above that, sure. You know, it might just take right off. It, it would be an ag aggressive turn for sure. It's, a, again, another aggressive chart potential. So that's what you want to watch. But anything under 310, 320 on a close, I wouldn't even think about it. Unless you're a pro at it. There's lots of margin in here for somebody that really knows how to day trade it. But you can see what happens, right? It's got a nature. Uh, MTSL, no, TCP. DXG. Just taking a quick look through here. Okay, TGTX. <coughs> Pardon me, sorry. Okay, TGTX over the 200, same idea, in a bottom formation, but it just doesn't get up. No, might it? Sure, it might. You might want to watch it close, but it looks to me like these are starting to set up for possible moves, so I wouldn't deny them. Normally, I would just throw this out, uh, but um, it moves structurally. You know, through its fibs. I don't even have to set up the fibs to know that this is nice and structural. Uh, you got one, two, three, four steps up. The upside wasn't as structured. The upside wasn't as structured. But if it gets going up over this 200, it holds this 200, it gets going up in here. This step down that you're seeing here will happen here on the upside. So you, you just take this extension. You just mirror this this way. So we'll see if that happens. Actually, I'll follow this one. I think these are uh, I think these are going to be the play. I see a bunch of them setting up. 50.05. So we'll watch them close. And that's all I had on my list. Oh, they are the dumpers this morning. I want to see. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Yeah, there's nothing in there I want to look at. I'm just 
checking to see if any of the dumps were interesting for me, but they're not. Okay, so those are all the charts I wanted to look at today. Friday will be kind of the same uh, number of charts, and then starting Monday it'll be massive amounts. We got to get through a hundred uh, of our regularly followed equities between Monday and Friday next week. Uh, so we'll be reviewing a hundred throughout the week, plus you know Momos and any others that people ask for. So have a great day, great day guys. I'm gonna take a quick break, and I'll be back later for futures. Talk to you later.